So a few weeks ago, I bought this house here in Melbourne, Victoria, and it's nice and all, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Well, here's the real reason I bought it. Welcome to Obsidian Exotics. Don't mind me almost breaking my ankles just then, but welcome to what's gonna be my personal monster fish breeding facility. Now, those of you that know me knew that I had my personal collection in my garage this whole time, and it was just a double garage. It wasn't anything special, so I don't really have that much space to keep all the fish that I liked. Uh, now, with this new house, I specifically wanted something with a bit more space to actually have a lot more tanks there. So when I came across this house on the market that had this you know, big shed at the back with the mezzanine and office at the back, um, I knew for sure that I needed to get the house especially for the shed, just because I'll have a lot more fish tanks for my personal collection. And you know, majority of the stingrays that I sell through the business are actually bred by me at home. So having the extra space will definitely help in terms of upping the numbers of what we can produce every year. So it'll be really cool. But to give you guys a better idea, I'll put you up here so you can see the whole area. All right, so this is roughly six meters across by about five meters this way or five and a half. But this is just the opening area at the front. We actually have a mezzanine up there as well. That's a pretty decent size. And the storage runs all the way across. There's also an office back there, which is about eight and a half meters long and about two and a half meters wide. So I've got a lot more space compared to my little double garage that I had all my fish in before. But yeah, so my plans are, I wanna stock this whole room with a lot of tanks. So I wanna have, I'm thinking an eight x four rack system here, and then a 10 x four rack system here. I'll actually do like a, a 3D model so you guys can get a better idea of what it's all gonna look like. And then I also wanna have one big display tank here, maybe like, I'm thinking 12 foot by five foot, by maybe three foot tall. And um, there's a wall on this side that I wanna have a few smaller rack systems, like uh, maybe a four foot rack system and a three foot rack system there where I can grow out all those little stingray pups. But yeah, I'll take you guys up to the mezzanine first uh, and I'll show you how I get up there because we don't have a ladder yet. Anyway, we'll, we'll get you started on the mezzanine tour. So to get to the mezzanine, I'm gonna have to climb this. What I'll do is I'll get up there and I'll put you guys over there so you can wait for me while I climb up. Okay, now that I'm up, this is the mezzanine. Oh, that was my head. This is the mezzanine. Uh, still, you know, decent amount of space. It's probably about three meters across that way and about, I'd say about six meters across this way. And we also have a little crawl space in there that goes for another three meters or so. I don't know if you can quite see in there, but that goes on for a while. So plenty of storage space up here. And I'm thinking some of the rack systems, I might have to actually use this front area for the sumps for it. And maybe have the ladder connect here. So that way I don't have to keep jumping off. But yeah, I'm thinking the ladder will connect somewhere there and we can have all the storage space back here. Anyway, let's go on to the office now. Ah. All right, let's go to the office. So the office is through this door. All right, so this is the office. It's a bit of a long hallway in here, but yeah, it's about eight and a half meters long from back to front and about two and a half meters wide. But yeah, there's plenty of space in here, as you can see. Uh, I'm actually thinking of having a bunch of rack systems on this side. So I'm thinking a six foot rack system there and maybe two four foot rack systems. And the same for this side, two four foot rack systems. But the most important thing about this room is it's got air conditioning. So when the humidity goes up, especially during summer, and once I've got all the tanks in here, it's gonna be like, pretty horrible in here. So what I'm thinking is I'll put a glass divider where that wall sort of sticks out. I'll section that off and that'll be my 
proper office, I guess. So I'll put a desk in there. I'll even have all my like recording stuff in there. So I'll have um, a permanent camera set up and the lighting I need for the YouTube videos so I can constantly film from there. And also it'll be, you know, better for sound quality too. I'll put some sound deadening panels in there. And yeah, and also I'm thinking for this panel, as soon as you walk through the door, I'm gonna have this as sort of like a control panel. So I'll have like, maybe like a little whiteboard and it'll say all the treatments I've done or certain stingrays that are pregnant that I'm expecting at a certain date. I'll have all that written up. I also have like maybe security cameras so I can check um, what's going on everywhere, I guess. That'll be pretty cool. But yeah, this is, this is the view from my office, I guess. But I'll have all the tanks over there, so it'll be really nice once it's filled out. But yeah, I think that wraps up the whole tour of the facility. Um, it's not much, but there's a lot of potential here. And yeah, if you like the video and you want to stay up to date on the whole project, definitely subscribe to the channel and you can see every video I put out on it. I want to try and get the whole project done by the end of the year, but we'll see, it's a lot of work. Um, we'll at least get, you know, you'll see the process happening one at a time. So we'll try and do maybe one rack system at a time and we'll get there. But yeah, it's going to be a massive project and I can't wait to show you how I get it all done and all the hiccups that happen along the way as well. And yeah, if you like the video, definitely leave a like down below. It really helps the, the channel spread out to other people. All right, before I wrap things up, um, I've got to answer a few frequently asked questions. So let me find somewhere to put you guys and I will get somewhere for this camera. Wait there. Perfect. I'll take that and you can stay right there. All right, let's have a little chat. So the first thing I need to address is the Red Tail Giant Garami project. I've had so many people ask what's going on with it and for updates of the whole project. So here's your update. As of now, I haven't had the chance to put them together for a few weeks now. The last few weeks have been absolute chaos. We actually had the Melbourne Pet Expo two weeks ago. I don't know if you guys saw the video, I'll leave a link up there, but it was absolute madness. I'm actually really surprised we managed to pull it off, but it actually turned out really well. It was a massive mission and it took a lot of people to get it done, but I think we got some very positive feedback from it. We actually had so many people sort of swarm the venue constantly because we had pretty much the biggest tank there and the biggest fish there. So definitely go check out that video. But before that, I had so many stingray puffs spawned. So because of that, I've had all my attention on the stingrays, so I haven't really had a chance to separate the giant garamis into their own tank or work on the new pond build that I was doing. So the plan was to actually get it done next week where I start building the pond, but since then I've had to book in a Queensland trip. So I do these regular trips where I transport large aquarium fish from one state to another. So in this case from Victoria to Queensland, which is about a 21 hour drive with fuel stops and everything included. Uh, and it's a bit of an adventure, so I'll be vlogging that for next week and I'll actually show you what I get up to while I'm up there as well. Once that video is done and I'm back, hopefully the week after that, I'll get to work on the project. Fingers crossed, nothing goes wrong. <laughs> hopefully we get it waterproofed in two, three weeks time and then we can have the giant Grammys go in pretty soon. And once they're in that pond, hopefully within two weeks I'll have eggs. That's usually how it works. Once I've got them in there and they've settled in, Roughly two weeks from then is when I have them breeding. I'm pretty confident that we'll get it done, but we'll see what happens, I guess. I do also have to mention, unfortunately, a couple of weeks back, we actually had something very tragic happen in the fish room. So the drip system on one of my rack systems where I keep the majority of my expensive stingrays, uh, unfortunately got clogged up and the ammonia level spiked up to two parts per million for a, for a couple of days. And unfortunately, stingrays being so sensitive to ammonia levels, that was enough to kill a fair portion of the fish that was in that system. So I ended up losing three mature adult stingrays. One of them was my albino pearl male, which was actually ready for breeding, which is a pretty solid hit to the collection. Um, we also lost two mature black diamond Matoro hybrids. And also we lost about 13 uh, stingray pups. Now newborn pups are a lot more sensitive than adult stingrays, which are already sensitive anyway. So unfortunately there's not much I could have done, but you know, you live and you learn. So the main reason that happened is because my three stage carbon filter that water runs through before it goes through the drip system, um, those cartridges need to be replaced roughly every six months for an average household. 
but given the area I was living in, um, the water quality there is not very good. So you usually have to replace it every two months or so. It just so happened that for this time, the cartridges clogged up within one month and I wasn't prepared to have the spare cartridges show up just in time. So when I did order them, it was a couple days late. And unfortunately those two days was enough to spike the ammonia to two ppm. Now another reason that happened is because I keep all my systems pretty heavily stocked. Now I can afford to do this usually because I flush a thousand liters of water every single day through all the systems. So every three days, all the water in the system has completely turned over. Um, and because of this, I know I can stock a lot more, but obviously something like this where the system stops working and I didn't want to do a straight tap water water change and add some dechlorinator afterwards because I know for a fact the water quality there is pretty bad and I have actually lost fish in the past from doing a basic water change and adding some sort of dechlorinator in there. Regardless of what you add in there, the chloramine levels and the existing ammonia in the tap water is too high for it to just be able to go straight into the tank, which is why I run it through the three-stage carbon filter. So since then, I've actually bought heaps of backups for the carbon filter. So if it ever gets clogged, I'll always have backups, but, but I guess I had to learn that the hard way. But I think that's everything that you guys need to sort of get up to date by now. Uh, I'll slowly start working on this move very soon. The first thing we need to do here is we need to get all the plumbing done. So I still want to run all the drip systems and whatnot. So I'll show you how I set up my three stage carbon filter and my drip system to get automatic water changes happening on all my tanks. So I'll basically have a drain pipe running all the way across the perimeter of this room and also the other room as well. And then I'll have drain points for each tank that's on the rack systems. So when the drip system flushes water into it, the water can just overflow into the drain. So it'd be flushing through a decent amount of water from every tank. So it'd be the same as doing a water change every week, except you just you know, flush a small amount of water every single day to make up for that amount of volume. A huge thank you to everyone that's been watching all the videos. Uh, we hit a thousand subscribers in just three weeks, which is absolutely insane. And let's see if we can keep that traction going. But yeah, thank you for all the amazing support and that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.